my final guest this evening is a person who's been running a business or dealing with people for the last 10, 15 years of her life, transitioned from one profession to another and has the skills to talk to anybody. I've seen this lady talk to anybody. It doesn't matter how many objections you have, she'll talk to you. And when you finish, tell all the objections, she then puts her message across. Just welcome to the platform, Miss Barbara Anderson. One of the things that's challenges in our community is the whole thing about customer service. Yeah. How to treat clients, how to treat customers, how to, how to get past objections, mm -hmm. how to revitalize a relationship, yeah. how to keep the relationship alive, how to sell something to someone and they don't feel as though you're just, they're just, take, you're just taking their money off them. Because yeah. some of us don't like to be sold to. Well, none of us actually. I don't think anybody likes to be sold to anyway. Um, for me, one of the biggest thing about it is our belief in either what we're doing or our belief in people. First and foremost, um, we try to get across our products to people. However, it's not about that. Are you genuinely interested in the person? So when you ask a question, make sure you ask the question because you're genuinely interested in the answer. It's not about asking a question because you wanted to get your message across. It's more about asking this question and making sure that you're genuinely interested in the answer. Because later on, you'll be able to use that same answer further in your conversation with this person. And they thought you'd have forgotten about it. And you bring that same thing back up to them. So for me, it's being first genuinely interested in whatever they're going to talk about and not, you know, short, sort of get in there with my own thing. Give us an example then. Okay, um, in terms of, um, you guys have all heard about forming. You must form someone when you meet them. The first thing you do is you form them. But the thing about forming is that when I talk to somebody, I could talk to somebody for a while and I could hear everything about them in five minutes. And I might not say anything about myself. And it's when I'm leaving, somebody might say to me, um, so what do you do then? Yeah, uh, but I've gone all that I need to know about you to be able to make a decision whether or not I want to work with you. So even in terms of my business and a lot of the people, you might be a good example of that. I never ever approached you about what I did for a long time. We saw each other in the corridor, we spoke, but never ever approached you about my business until you saw me running down the corridor all excited one day and wanted to know. So people will come to you at the right time as well. It's not just about rushing them with what you've got, it's about timing as well. So for me, it's finding something that I know at the right time I'll be able to speak to you about. And how do you do that? How do you then do that? Because many of us find it very difficult to, 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 to engage the first line in that conversation. Hi, you know, you might say, how are you and what's your name? Yes. And then depending on the response, you might not be able to navigate it very well. Yeah. I think it's being able to look past where people are at at their state of mind at that particular time. Because if somebody is grumpy, chances are they're having a bad day. So what I try to do is to make a joke first and foremost. So even if they're having a bad day, I'll sort of say, okay, is it that bad then? Go on, what happened? Yeah, and I genuinely be smiling and want to know what has gone on. And I love asking questions. All the people might think I'm nosy, but I, I want to know so I can tell somebody else the story. I love to talk. So I'll be able to use that story in the future. So when I talk to people and they're having a bad day, what I'll sort of do is find out what's caused the problem. Why are they upset? Why are you not smiling today, Alex? Things like that. So I'd want to know, or I'd say something funny, and they'll have to laugh. And then that's always opener for a conversation. It's sort of hard for people not to be nice to you after you made them smile. Mm. It's really, really hard. And that's the biggest thing, is to try and get people to smile first and foremost. But we've got to come out of our shell to be able to do that. I used to work in an office. I was never, ever the kind of person who had done any business before. I'm an accountant. I used to sit in an office. I used to do my work, and that was it. So when I got introduced to business to go work for myself, it was scary. But I realized that if I wanted that dream you're talking about bad enough, then I'd forget my fears. So now I don't have, as you say, a problem talking to anybody. What's they're going to say? I've learned all the objections. There is no objection that somebody could tell me anymore. So and in fact, because I can sort of preempt what somebody is going to say, if they've got loads of children, they're going to say to you, I don't have time. So I know that before, and I'll tell my story about my time. If they said I don't have money, I know what to say. I told my story about not having money and how I managed to start where I am. So you've got to know people. You've got to get to understand and learn who people are. And if you know the person, you'll be able to sort of overcome the objection even before they've said it. So that's the thing for me. I know what it is they're going to say. There's nothing anybody can tell me I haven't heard before. Do you get enough objections? You learn how to master objections. Okay, give me one objection from the crowd straight away. Don't think about it. Give me an objection. 
Any objections? I've got the time. You haven't got the time? That's great, Marilyn. You know, I felt exactly the same when I saw this business. How many hours would you say you have in the week at the moment? How many hours do you think everybody gets in a week? You have never thought about that? Well, actually, it's about 168 hours in the week, Marilyn. Yeah? And let's say you sleep eight hours a night. Do you sleep eight hours a night at the moment? You do. Okay, so seven eights, that's 56, right? So if you take 56 from 168, how much is that? 112. Yeah? And do you work at the moment? How many hours do you work? Let's say 40 hours a week. Okay, so 40 hours a week, and I'll give you 20 hours to prepare for work as well from that. So 60 from 112, how much is that? So you've got 52 hours, right? Okay. Do you go to church, Marilyn? Okay, so I'll give you eight hours from that for church. How much have you got left? Yeah, 46. Okay, I'll give you eight hours from that for shopping for the week, Marilyn. Yeah, it's a little bit less. 38. You have 38 hours left. What else do you do? You spend time with your friends? Yeah. Okay, 10 hours a week for that, Marilyn, for your social life. <laughs> 28. Okay, what else do you do? Kids? Time with the kids? Okay, so let's say you spend about 10 hours a week with the kids. That's to leave you with 18 hours. Think you could find 10 hours a week out of that time to be able to start looking at your business? Yeah? Studying? You still had 18, you still got 8 hours left. And I'm sure she doesn't sleep 8 hours a night. People say they sleep 8 hours a night, but they don't. You do. All right. You might, okay, that's fine. But I've still given you the eight hours anyway. I'm just saying, but the average person, you're an exception. The average person doesn't sleep eight hours. In a, and Marilyn doesn't spend eight hours in church. And she doesn't spend ten hours with her friends, despite what she says. Yeah? So, she, yeah. But, but, but that's the thing about it, is that people will tell you these things, but you know the general things that will take people's time every week, and you bump up the time. She doesn't spend 20 hours preparing for, week, for work every week, does she? So the people who said I don't have time, it's just an excuse. I had a lady who told me once, whenever you say anything, she said, Barbara, that's a belly button. I have one, don't give me yours. Yeah? So at the end of the day, what we're saying is time is relative, and so people will say time, but um, that's because they don't want to do it. Yeah? How about I don't have the money? When I started in my business, I wrote a check for 140 pounds. I didn't have the money on my bank account. And I rang the guy up after I'd wrote the check and I, I said to him, don't bank my check. He said to me, why not? I said, I don't have money. He said, how many years have been working? I told him. He said to me, okay, that's fine. If your car broke down on the motorway and you had no breakdown cover, and it was going to take you 150 pounds to get off the motorway, would you sleep there or would you get off the motorway? I said, I'd get off the motorway. It's on the other hand, if I was given the key to a brand new Mercedes and it was in Sheffield, you needed 150 pounds to go and pick up the key, would you find it? I said, yes. He said, do the same thing you would do to get that money and then come back and talk to me. Don't call me back. That was seven years ago. That was seven years ago. If he hadn't said that, I'd still be here saying, I don't have a spare 140 pounds. Yeah? So you'll get the excuses about money. People genuinely are suffering. I'm a single mother. I've been a single mother ever since, so I've never had money to sort of say I've got spare money. But if people really want to do it, they will do it. Yeah? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Any yeah. other objection that you wanted to ask? Not interested. Not interested? What are you not interested in? Whatever you <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? You seem like the kind of person who would not make a decision without having all the facts. Am I correct? <laughs> yeah so uh, possibly so you've just made you're telling me that's who you are but you've just made a decision without having all the facts so you're telling me that's not really who you are Woo. yeah I always say that to people people always say I'm, I'm not interested but what are you not interested in exactly. are you not yeah exactly they always do that but you know you're not the kind of person with who would make a decision without having all the facts am I correct that's true okay then so you're going to have a look first before you're not interested. Yeah? What are you selling? What am I selling? I don't even know what it is. <laughs> 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 yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, don't worry. I don't sell. <laughs> it's funny because people say to me all the time, have you had sales training? No, I haven't. I've never been on a selling course. I've never been on anything. I just realized something about people. As Alex said, nobody likes to be sold on anything. Nobody wants to buy anything from you. People got to buy and believe that they bought it 
off their own back. Not because you told them anything that made them made a decision. So one of the things about it is, is to find out what their needs are. And everybody wants to make more money, but nobody wants to work for it. They don't want to get out of bed in the evening to go or in the morning early to go do it. So what is it that they want more than anything else? What is it that they'll walk off a hot call for? Can I yeah. just back you up on what you're saying? Yes. Um, what's his name? The guy that, um, How to Win Friends and Influence. And Influence. Yes. The, 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 yeah. I remember reading his book several years ago. Yes. And he, he's a salesman. Yes. And he said he's never sold anything to anybody. Yes. What he used to always do is go into a family. In those days, salesmen went from house to house. Yes. Went into a family's house, had tea, had coffee, and just spoke. Absolutely. And then sometimes during the conference, they was, uh, during the conversation, they say to him, Oh, what are you selling? Selling, yes. And then he said, um, this is what I've come here to do. And they just signed. He so didn't even know what, know it, what was. it was about. Yeah. He just wanted to know about people. Yeah. And because he cared so much, he became the most successful salesperson in his company. I, I yeah. found as well in saying that, that one of the things about when you talk to people, if you wanted to talk to somebody, a lot of us have a product we want to sell to our friends. And you'd phone up your friend and, and you start telling them about this great product. And as Alex said, I go like, yeah, there you go again. I don't want to hear. Now, prior to me getting into business, I've never done anything else. I've done anything since. I've been doing the same thing for the last seven years. Yeah, so I'm one of those fortunate ones who found something that's straight away you got stuck in it. But the thing about it is you, you're talking to this person. You have a conversation. You hear all their groans and moans before you finish. And when you're finishing, you said, oh, by the way, would you know anybody? Yeah? Who would like what I have to offer? And you tell him whatever it is. So it's not a case if you call him up and that's it. We call up and we get straight into telling them about this lovely, fancy thing that we have. And they don't want to hear. So it's a hear more about them. Find out about how their lives are getting on, what's happening. And before you help, you're going to say, bye anyway. So you say, oh, by the way. And you ask them your question. Get the message across at that time. Yeah. Anything else? Confidence. Yes. It's forming a relationship. Yeah. And I could take it into what I've just finished trained on as a psychotherapist. Yes. It's building up that relationship yeah. so that person trusts you yes. to be able to or have confidence in you. Yes. To be able to tell you something extra about them. Yes. So they'll wonder and want more and be able to actually speak more and think, oh, actually, yeah. I want what you have and I, I want to give more to you. Absolutely. I want to spend more time with you in some way yeah. or the other. And, and as you've rightly said, it's about if you believe enough in, in what you're doing, people will want what you're doing. You, they don't even, as, you, as, as Isaac was saying, they don't know what it is, but I want some of that. Whatever it is, you're on, I want some of it. And that's the thing about it. You've got to believe. I think a lot of people do business because of the money and not because they believe in what they're doing. Don't ever get into a business or do a business that you don't believe in. Don't do anything just for the money. Because that is the challenge. If you're doing it for the money, you won't succeed. You've got to believe so much that when everybody is saying no, you say you keep stepping. They say no, you keep stepping. That's the thing about it. But that is why people go from business to business to business because they're only doing it for the money. Yeah? There's no stickability. That's what Greg Reed in Three Feet from Gold said. You've got to find something with stickability. Yeah? Wow. Anything else? I was, give, I was told the word uh, a couple of years ago in um, year nine. Stick to itiveness. Yes. When yes. Word, yes. Just came back. Stick to it. Absolutely. And it's the same thing with that word focus. You know what the acronym is. Follow one course until successful. That's that's what focus stands for. Yeah? So stick to one thing. I know. Faith on course until something happens. All right. That's it. That's very true. Any other questions you want to ask Barbara about forming relationships to to um to engage someone with your products or your services? Barbara, thank you very much. Thank you. For coming here. Thanks. Thank you for having me. And being in business for so long, what would, what would be your final word to anyone who was starting out in 2012? In the, what would you recommend? What would you say to them? You've got to find something that is not necessarily going to take all your life savings straight away. I did something seven years ago that most people I would totally dissuade anyone from doing. I had two jobs. I had a full-time job. I had a part-time job. I was going to college two evenings a week, single mother with a three-year-old daughter. And I, I saw the business that I'm now in, and I gave up my part-time job and automatically gave up 1,200 pounds without even knowing how the business worked or what I was going to do. 
um, two and a half, three months later, I gave up my full-time job and went full-time. And I didn't even, I haven't even made any money in the business at that point. That's not something I would encourage anybody to do. Yeah, you should. Uh, you know, I don't think your business should be at the expense of your losing your sanity, yeah. <clears throat> your family, or anything like that. And um, if you've ever listened to Wayne Malcolm, one of the things he always says is that when you're in business, it's never ever like sort of this easy straight thing and everything is balanced. It isn't. Your family will lean and move, you know, to, to balance you. The same direction you're going, they lean that way. But the thing about it is, you got to find something, as I said, that you believe in whatever it is and if it's been bugging you earlier when i walk in i heard alex saying it. if some you know was a sharon was saying if it's been there all the time and it's in your mind and it's bugging you go <coughs> out and try it read some good books there's a very good book if you're planning to start a business i would suggest um, not that i'm not saying don't read alex's book now there's a book called the dream giver and it's written by Bruce Wilkinson. If you've read The Prior of Jabez, he's also written, he's written a book called The Prior of Jabez and he's written The Dream Giver. And it talks about your dream and he's written like a little story so it would make sense. I can't read heavy books. Think and Grow Rich, I read the first chapter and I stopped. It's too heavy for me. So The Dream Giver is a fantastic book if you're thinking of going into business because it tells you of the obstacles, but it tells you them as stories. It gives them names, people who will stop you. They're called border bullies. You know, the landlord, the man who owns the town, who is stopping you from going for the business because he's going to lose you as a tenant in the town and all of that. And so it's written as a story and it's very, very good. So I would suggest you read that book. There's lots of good scriptures at the back of it. I know this is not religious, but at the back of it, there's lots of good scriptures, you know, if you're so inclined to read the scriptures but even without the scriptures you will get the story that you know about your journey and it was given to you and nobody else can live it for you and nobody other people might not believe in it but that's okay if it was meant to be their dream they'd have had it not you it was given to you it's your dream and the thing about it is you hang on to that dream and you just keep pushing and don't ever stop no matter what anybody else says because guess what if he brings you to it he'll bring you through it all right